Hello guys and welcome back to the studio. Today me and Emily have been working on the second sale. We actually launched a second sale on Sunday of all enamel pins and stuff and I thought because I'm jumping on orders with Emily I would do a little impromptu YouTube video for you all on how I pack my Etsy orders. So hopefully you'll get a gist. I know a few of you <laughs> enjoy the studio vlogs where I pack the orders but I'll show you exactly what I use, the tools I use and exactly how I ship my products from enamel pins to art prints to pin displays and stuff. Also I want to say a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you like educational videos like this, I think this is classed as an educational video, but if you like learning videos like this I'm pretty sure you will love Skillshare. It's an online learning platform for artists, creators, anything like that or maybe you're an entrepreneur, whatever you are it's got loads of different courses online for you to check out from how to sell on Etsy to how to package orders. It even has like a section on that as well things like that so yeah definitely go check them out they're offering the first 500 people who sign up in the link below two months free Skillshare so if you fancy two months free education on Skillshare grab that information while you can if you want to open a YouTube channel or anything like that it's got loads of great courses for you to choose from so definitely go check out the link in the description Thank you so much Skillshare. Now let's get into packaging these orders because we've got a lot to get through. So let's go, shall we? Also, please ignore my puffy hair. I slept on it wet last night and it's just not a great idea, is it? Okay, so this little section over here is actually where we package and ship everything. We've got my old Mac that I used to have at home when I ran my business from home. And this is usually what we use for shipping. So we open up Etsy and we have our shipping label printer ready here which you can actually watch on YouTube I do a review of this it's really good and we've been using it ever since it's the brother QL700 and we have that plugged in here we copy and paste the order and then we click print so do you want to click print Em? oh uh, yeah what we tend to do is just tick the order so that we know who's working on what. So if I'm working on Carol's ticket and I'll print out the label on my brother printer and if Emily's working on that one she'll tick that so that we don't uh, do duplicate orders. But you get my gist for the shipping labels. And then this is our little shipping station over here. So these little drawers here are where we store our old enamel pins. These are running out. I actually don't have a space for these anymore because our enamel pins are now over here uh, and this is how we're currently storing enamel pins they're just in like these boxes because now we have so many enamel pins that they don't fit in these small drawers then Emily's just got some envelopes on the side so it's really quick and easy for her to pick up and order these envelopes are bubble mailers and this is uh, size reference E2 from Mailite. Um, and to be honest, these are a little bit too big because this is how we ship our enamel pins because we did used to use these for shipping enamel pins and normal envelopes. But the problem with this is when you put an enamel pin in, sometimes it can bend in the post, like the backs of the enamel pins can bend. So we found that these didn't work as well, but Jiffy bags, which have um, bubble wrap inside, work really well do you think em oh, yeah. we haven't really had any complaints have we since they've gone and here she's folding this enamel pin in half like this so it's double layered oh, yeah. so she folds it like this Ta -da! <laughs> and then here we have some return labels printed out i buy these pre-scored off um amazon i think it is and it's just like so I think it's 24 labels a sheet or 32 labels a sheet, I can't remember. And we just have our return address and stuff on here and we put that on the back of every single one of our orders. What Emily is writing on right now, this is called a customs declaration. Now, from the UK, if you're a UK seller, you need to fill these in if they're going to an international country, otherwise they get stuck in customs and sometimes they can still get stuck in customs. And what you usually do, is you fill in what the contents of the package are, you sign and date it, and you put the value of the content. So I'm going to package Nate's enamel pin, which is a seconds, and it's a baby shark, and I'm gonna copy and paste her address. And I'll, I normally just put it here while Emily works here, so I get the smallest first now because I've been evacuated from the shipping area. Now Emily's in charge of this. 
she gives me the tiny little desk space to ship on. So he wants one um, baby shark pin and we have currently got the seconds out at the moment but usually we would just pull it from the anal pin sections over here. I'm going to get the seconds out of here. And then all I do here, usually we have these already pre-made. Emily normally counts them all and organises them into seconds and stuff. But then I just poke this through the back backing. I used to use bubble wrap, but I find that washi tape actually works really well if you put the backing card on top like this. And you poke the enamel pin through. Like this. And I will show you how I package just a single enamel pin. For all orders, I usually throw in this free marshmallow fan postcard, which you guys might recognize from Patreon, but I've changed it into a little love heart, and everyone gets a free one of these until stocks last. I put in a thank you catnip card to every order, and I'm currently throwing in these freebies uh, because they're slightly pixelated. These are postcards, but they're slightly pixelated, so I throw this in for free for them as well, just to say thank you. And I'll put them together like this. I'll place the enamel pin face down so that it doesn't damage. If you put it pointing this way, in the post, it may damage the underneath bits of all here. So it may damage the postcard and stuff on the back. So I'll put it face down. And then I have these little glassine bags which you might have seen and previous to this I used to use wheat bags but at the moment we've got a thousand glassine bags so rather than wasting them I'm currently using the glassine. Then I'll just slide this in. Then I have a little bit of confetti in my old Panettone mugs. As you can see it's pink and gold which is really really cute. So I'll grab some confetti. I only grab a few because I don't like to be annoying. Sprinkle a little bit of catnip magic inside of there. It needs a bit more than that. And then I'll fold the glassine bag and fold it again. And then I'll seal the envelope with some washi tape. And you can get these really cheap off Amazon. These are just washi tape holders. You can get them on eBay and Amazon. Seal it. Ta-da! So it's sealed like this. I love the feeling of these glassine bags. Then I'll get the bubble mailer that I showed you earlier. Pop the order in here. And then I'll fold this times two like you've seen Emily doing just because the pin back is here. That double layer as I fold it offers double protection. So I'll fold it in half. You want to make sure that it doesn't go too thick because then it might be over a large letter size. But I just fold these in half and this is an over large letter size for the UK standards anyway. So you don't want to get charged for a small parcel. And then I just seal it on the back. Like this. I don't need to fill a customs label in for this because it's going to the UK. So I'll grab a return label. Place it on the back. And then I'll put the shipping label on the front of the envelope. And then that's it. That was one enamel pin order. So now me and Emily are going to get to work on packing orders. And I'll show you kind of just the process of us both working on it. And then if I get to an art print or anything like that, I'll show you how I package my art prints as well. Now next up, we have this order from Rosa. And it is actually a pin display. And then we've got an enamel vinyl sticker as well. And a washi tape, a seconds washi tape. Now pin displays are a little uh, different to how we package usually because we have to use a pip box and what a pip box pip box is it's basically a large letter shipping box so underneath these cupboards here it's a bit of a mess of them and i'm sorry about that so we've got hard backed envelopes here we've got bubble mailer bags and then we've got some tissue paper and stuff on over here and then we have the mailer boxes now these are a4 large letter uk mailboxes so these fit in a letter box which means we'll only be charged for large letter shipping rather than small parcel shipping so that is the benefit of these boxes and another benefit to these boxes are the pin display will not get bashed around or squashed because it's kind of like a solid cardboard i mean the cardboard can get squashed but it just offers a little bit extra protection while we're shipping but we have to assemble these ourselves also i forgot to mention we have this cute little squishy bin that we use for you know all the annoying peely things for the envelopes 
So when you peel the back off an envelope, we put the rubbish in here and kind of when we use the custom listings. And we got this little squishy guy as a, it was Halloween basket originally. And we got this guy from Sainsbury's at Halloween. What should we name this guy? Let me know in the comments below. What does he look like? The first thing we need to do is assemble this box. And it's pretty simple. Just fold in the sides. And what we normally do for shipping banners and stuff is we add a little bit of pre-cut tissue paper. Every time I receive a catnip goodie, I like my customers to feel like they're receiving a little present. So I put a little bit of tissue paper in and then I'll put the hand printed display in. I'll put the little vinyl sticker that they ordered in like this and then this won't get squashed I'll lay this on top this batch of washi tape is actually going to come pre-packaged with a logo on the front but the first batch of washi tapes I ever had didn't come packaged so we usually package them in another small glassine bag and we have some stickers Ta-da! and then we'll place this in as well and then we'll just place them in like this and I'll put this to the side so it doesn't damage this pin display I'll put the vinyl sticker on top so that it's not gonna get uh, crumpled if it gets moved around then a marshmallow one we keep these out on the side just so they're really quick and easy to access when we're packaging and we'll lay that on top too then it's time to add some little sprinkles of confetti so let's grab some sprinkles and let's sprinkle it over here like this. Ta-da! We pre-cut our tissue paper so that it fits perfectly in these boxes. And then we just fold the top like so and we'll seal this with a logo. <laughs> that's it done so if it's a pin display or if they've ordered tons of enamel pins we usually use these boxes I have got an A4 box and I also ordered some A5 ones so the smaller ones down there if they order multiple pins I'm so sorry about the mess probably isn't the best time to film this when we're really busy and it's really messy in the office I mean look at this carpet but that is just the reality of it it is a mess at the moment we just need to fold this and seal it sometimes if it's really bad weather what I'll do is I'll put this cardboard box Box in one of the plastic bags um, down here so that it doesn't get water damage and it doesn't seep through and damage the contents of the products. And that's it for the boxes. I just seal it with the really strong duct tape at the sides and underneath. And this is just to offer protection. I'm just covering the address with a coaster. Uh, this will offer protection on the way in the mail. And this is going to the USA. And we'll put this in the pile over here. We usually have a bag where we have everything ready, but Emily's just been stacking it up because I think we've run out of bags. With art prints, what we do is we normally put these on the backing card with a cello bag around them and we wrap them in tissue, which I'll show you in a second so let's find an art print order so the art prints come packaged like this i will be doing a video on how i make and package my art prints uh, for resale uh, but she's ordered this cute summer girl and they come packaged like this in a cello sleeve on the back is a hard mount board or gray board you can search for these on ebay amazon and just on the internet depending on where you're from uh, quite a few places sell these but this is just to offer protection as the art print is on 180 GSM paper so it is quite bendy and we don't want it to arrive to the customer with like bent edges or like crinkled art print because this is going to go hopefully in a frame on someone's wall so yeah and that is usually how we package our planner stickers uh, like I say multiple stickers will go in one single bag rather than packaging each and every single sticker sheet in separate bags that is a lot of waste so we put it all in one bag and we seal it with a little catnip logo as you can see so that will just be put on here with our envelopes being paper envelopes we need to make sure these are watertight so as you can see i've planted the enamel pin face down i've wrapped it in bubble wrap to make sure when it goes in the post because this will actually be sent in a do not bend envelope to protect the art print from brent from bending further even though we've already got a backing board for this i still like to make 
make sure that we have extra measures. So because we're not send, sending the enamel pin in a bubble mailer, we wrap them in these small individual bags, which you can get all over the website, all over the internet, just search sealable bubble bags and you should be able to find loads of different options from where you're from and then we'll actually put this face down in the package so that the pins back won't dent through to the side even though they're covered in bubble they still have the chance if they're pressed in the mail bag uh, to damage the stickers or the art print so we tend to put it flat and then that kind of eliminates that problem now we just need to wrap this up as a little cute gift and send it in the post so let's get it wrapped We'll just put the shipping label and the customs label on the back because this is going on the way to the America uh, to America. So yeah, we put them in these A5 do not bend envelopes. You can also get A4 ones, you can get different sizes, you can even get white ones, pink ones, all sorts of different colour, but it just gives that little bit extra strength when the art prints are being shipped so that the art prints aren't damaged in the post if we were sending just stickers like planner stickers we would also use these please do not bend envelopes but we wouldn't use a backing card for the stickers because there's just no need uh, this is usually sufficient for the stickers i've never had any complaints of bends or anything like that do not bend envelopes are fantastic for paper goods and things that you don't want bending and yeah that's pretty much it that's how i package and ship my Etsy orders or how we package and ship our Etsy orders and Lee's just having a break while I film this video. That's pretty much it. Do not give yourself a hard time if your packaging isn't up to scratch on how you have envisioned in your head. It will come with time. I'm still evolving my packaging. My packaging is definitely not where I want it to be at. I'm constantly changing things, trying new um, techniques and ways to make it look more professional and it just grows with time. Um, my packaging has changed quite drastically since I first started when I first started it wasn't anything like that I used to wrap it in twine and all sorts of things like that so do not worry just get started get your first product out make sure it's nice and protected and can get to your customer safely that's priority any extras like freebies and things can come with time as your business grows and you can invest more into things like that so do not worry if you haven't got freebies to give to your customers or if you haven't got all these fancy things that i've got like tissue paper and glassine bags and all this we just happen to have that uh, with time what i've invested in and what i'm kind of experimenting with but it's subject to change and it probably will change i would really like to get some custom tissue paper and bags made for me in the future but who knows just experiment and do something that works well for your brand. You don't need to use pastel pink cute tissue paper if you are looking at being more environmentally friendly. Maybe you want to use some nice brown packaging or eco craft packaging. Um, yeah, just be conscious of your brand and what message you want to give out to your customers. I like my customers to receive a little gift so it feels like they're opening a little present off me and that's why I put all these extras in but it's not necessary but that's just my way of saying thank you to everyone who offers me the support and everything that's what I like to give back to my customers. So I hope you found this video helpful maybe if you run in an Etsy store or you're thinking of running an Etsy store or you just want to see the behind the scenes of running an Etsy store and you're just curious as to how how we run it it might not be the most super professional way but it's been working for me for the last three years and like i say i'm always up for changing and adapting how i do things so that's more efficient and if you have any um tips or advice uh put it in the comments below and let everyone know share your etsy saw and get connecting and yeah help each other out guys because we're all on this planet once and we can all do well am i right thank you so much to skillshare for sponsoring this video and thank you to you guys for watching it and a huge 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 thank you to my patrons as well who helped me uh take time out my day to be emily and to record this type of content for you guys so thank you so much you beautiful human beings i love you all very 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 much i really really do uh thank you for making my dreams come true and helping grow catnip I will see you all very, very soon. All right then. Thanks for watching. Love you. Goodbye.